Chapter 4. So general linear overview using the steps in the image folder. Following my plan to stay organized. So this is the references just snapshot that I took. Don't care too much. So now I'm going to go through all the different uh, steps and um, those steps won't cover the final uh, compositing, rendering and uh, compositing and, and painting steps. But uh, at least uh, we are going to go through that later on. And uh, here I'm going to maybe to explain you a bit more of my, of my, uh, my thought process. So at some point, uh, I sculpted from the references that I show you in the last uh, chapter. And uh, I just did a first uh, quick render with um, some uh, diffuse lighting of our environment, just to see with the correct uh, light direction uh, how it would work. Because um, already at that stage, my idea was to try to make a composition based on uh, local colors instead of uh, lighting patterns. And um, these are the two main ways you can, I think you can make a composition uh, because uh, composition is based mostly on uh, abstract shapes that are recognizable by the by our eye based on their value, and uh, you can you can create um, value patterns either based on local colors of the objects. You know, is an object very dark is it very very clear or you can use your lighting patterns even even with a, a gray local color a uniform gray color local colors on all of your elements uh, playing with uh, the light and shadows you can create abstract uh, abstract shapes like that um, or you can obviously use a combination of, of the two and uh, in this one i really wanted to focus on local colors mostly uh, even though here there is strong lighting. So at this stage, I already corrected a bit of the anatomy. Um, I wasn't very happy. Uh, let me check that uh, uh, drawing feature in, uh, in the recording software. And I'll be... Okay, <laughs> I didn't find that feature. Uh, so we'll do it uh, just like that. Um, I think at that moment I was I was kind of close to the reference, uh, but uh, there was a lot of things that was annoying me in that reference. Uh, first of all, I wanted to to try not to go for something. Um, how should I say that? I wanted to avoid the. To avoid some things that will be, uh, you know, too erratic, if I can say that, I wanted to to people to to watch as a figure as a figure first, and uh, that's something I I noticed in the in the old master paintings of the academic uh, the, the neoclassical uh, period. Uh, you know, you, you the figure are so so beautiful. What what you see first. It, it's the beauty of the figure. It's not, it's not whether she has a, a exciting breast or, or anything like that. You, I, I really wanted to try to reach for that, and it's been very difficult. I don't know if I, if I attained, if I, if I achieved that goal, uh, but I, I wanted to try as hard as possible, and it's been quite of a struggle. You'll see later. I'm going to completely destroy this anatomy before coming back to it. And um, it's been mostly by, by getting away from the reference uh, more and more during the process. Uh, but at that point, at least I had, I had a close enough uh, anatomy, even though there's probably a tons of mistakes, but for the purpose of making an illustration, I, I thought it was, it was, uh, it was uh, close enough. Uh, I had a, a bit of surface details that we don't see super well here, but they were here. 
So it was it was a good a good start I, I thought. So here I just I just did um, some poly painting um, in case I wanted to to use it later in the in the painting. So I just painted a, a very rough uh, path of uh, poly painting just to have some color variations and uh, and a natural uh, color area on the body like uh, red of the knee and on the nipples and uh, and a bit. Uh, uh, colder uh, colors uh, around the ribcage and the and the um, the, uh, the, the the skeleton parts that we can see through through the through the skin. And once again, it's a, it's a very uh, I'm working in a very iterative process. So I'm I I try to never get too far at any stage because I know that. I've been doing that in the past, and it's a for me it's a mistake because usu usually the time I spend to going too far at an early stage is a waste of time. Most of the time, I'm either not going to reuse it, or the client is going to ask for a change, and I'm going to throw that away. So even here, I did a, a quick uh, poly paint pass. You can see it's very rough, and uh, it took me you know just like 30 minutes or so, not not much. And I saw this is the the flat rendering of the polypaint pass. So you see there is a lot of uh, very rough uh, spots uh, that's not blended at all. But uh, I thought, okay, I'm not sure a hundred percent that I'm going to reuse that. So uh, if at some point I notice that this pass is not uh, refined enough, I, I'll come back to it later and uh, I, I'll, I'll add uh, more details and uh, more. Uh, Subtlety. Okay, so um, these are not in the exact correct order. So from here, okay, I had my basic figure. Uh, I had my basic uh, lighting. I knew I wanted to have this light direction. Uh, and I was in that matter. I, I wanted to keep kind of the same lighting direction than the reference because uh, as I was painting, main uh, sculpting, sorry, mainly from one paint point of view, it means that I was very uh, tied to the lighting direction, uh, and uh, I knew that if I made too much change in the lighting direction, probably a lot of the sculpting work that I did wouldn't make sense at all. It's, it's really a 2.5D sculpting process. And uh, because of that, there is, there is things that absolutely don't work in either another lighting condition or another angle of view. So this is my first um, composition pass. And uh, I, I'll go into more details. Uh, just uh, in a, in, a, in two chapters, if I follow if I follow my plan. Um, here, what I did is I used the composition method that, I, that I've been experimenting uh, experimenting with since um, since a while now, and uh, it's uh, completely abstract shapes based. So what I'm doing is I try to to find nice patterns of uh, values that spread across the image and that uh, contain as much um, straight lines as possible at that point. I really want to, to use almost only straight lines. And I, I, I try to balance uh, the different areas and to create tensions and, uh, and to lead the eyes at, at a specific point using, uh, using lines. So I'm mainly thinking in 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 a shapes, abstract shapes. I don't, I almost don't care what they mean. You know, they, at this point now that I've I finished the image, I know what they are related to. But at this point, when I was uh, making those abstract shapes, I had no idea what it could be. I knew because I've decided to put a black, a black shape here on her, um, on her left leg. Uh, I kind of uh, knew it would be um, a dark fabric, but you know, at this stage, it could be just uh, body paint. 
black body paint or uh, or anything else it, it doesn't matter it's really about just finding nice patterns of black and white and uh, eventually mid gray but uh, i try to keep things simple have um, as few areas as possible as few shapes as possible just to keep the composition strong and uh, and uh, dynamic and in this stage what i did uh, and it's it's a technique that I that came to to my understanding, if I if I can say that, by uh, reading uh, James Gurney, where uh, I think it's is really James Gurney. I, I hope I don't do a mistake because I I have uh, quite a, uh, a few uh, composition uh, composition books, but uh, uh, I think he, he speak at some point of what he call uh, shape welding shape welding it is welding two different shapes together by the, their value uh, two different semantic shapes and that's something I I, I I try to use for myself I don't know if it's accurate or something but I'd like to think I like to think in terms of abstract shapes and semantic shapes and uh, what I refer to about semantic shapes is um, the meaning of the shape you know, is it plain? Is it uh, a fabric piece? Uh, is it uh, a swirl? Anything. This is the semantic of the shape, and the, the abstract shapes is 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 it is it black? Is it uh, straight? Is it uh, rounded? And uh, here, what I did, I did the opposite. That's that's the process where I'm starting by welding welded shapes. You know, because. Obviously, with with that few shapes on a canvas, you you have to to unweld that at some point. So here, I just unwelded the shapes and uh, and start to give them uh, some meaning. And at that moment, I I, I still thought I was doing uh, I was I would go for a figure study. So I thought, okay, maybe she could be set up, you know, in a in an artist studio. Uh, and there is uh, this nice light that is coming from the sailing and uh, this pattern on the ground is just uh, a light pattern and here there is a fabric and a bit of light behind that match the preceding uh, preceding shape but here it is i'm not to go too far i'll cover that later in the in the composition pass so now i've started to block in block in the composition with uh, with a 3d geometry and uh, my idea was to try to see if with a lighting and the local values of these 3D elements, if I could match my composition. Um, here I've started to, to change the, the focal length, something very important. That, that was a mistake that I was, I was doing a lot before. I was using very, very wide uh, uh, focal lengths and uh, the more I, 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 I'm doing images, and the more I, I'm starting to to um, to use a wider, um, I'm start to use narrower focal lengths. That is uh, greater photo focal lengths. So I have less distortions. So what I did here is just to retake the composition I try to move the figure a bit on the on the left because even though here uh, her torso is not right in the middle it's almost right in the middle and the legs in, on the side it, it was kind of too centered and I thought that with the other shapes around it was okay but I decided to, to change that so at some point I, I did more 3D blocking of the composition with just rough uh, 3D geometry. And uh, what it allowed me to see is that the value were working. You see here I have a mid gray and white, and here this is the same material as here. And uh, thanks to the shadows, we have these white materials becomes um, a mid gray value. That's what I wanted. Okay, a few more tweaking, another materials, just to see how it, how it reacts with different materials. Uh, 
And uh, at that point, as you see, I've started also to to change the anatomy. Uh, I, I know it's kind of it's kind of a funny anatomy right now. It's not it's not very cool, but um, I was trying to get away from the initial model to come closer to the painting references I had, and I, I was trying to, to grasp how I could um, come closer to this very rounded uh, anatomy proper to the to the, to the neoclassic area and uh, it was it was still a struggle so so here it's it's a bit funny uh, kind of a shame to show that but same here I've been working a bit more on the face try to add some symmetry to it but it's not going to be the de definitive face not at all so here I came back to my composition and uh, I tried to make a better sense of this rough 3D sketch and tried to start to define it to, to unweld a bit more the shapes to add more complexity and uh, I, at this point I, I, I knew I, I wanted to go for, for um, kind of this um, neoclassical uh, classical look and setup so I, I, I okay I told myself fine maybe there can be a chill here maybe I can add these straight lines to, to lead the eye back okay I'll try, I'll try to cover that in more detail later okay more steps uh, detailing the furniture more detailing here I've started to move my uh, my camera a bit uh, because I wanted to have um, more of a one point perspective, going uh, a bit more through 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 the, the character, and uh, also I thought that by moving the camera a bit like that I would have a, a more balanced uh, composition. Ooh, this step is very very funny. She has a super big head. I, I didn't care of this of this uh, end. That's that's absolutely terrible. And she she looks absolutely awful. I, I told you I, I I'm going through steps of completely awfulness. I, and I've destroyed if you if you look at what I did before here. I, I completely destroyed that anatomy here at that point. It, it looks absolutely terrible. Here again, <laughs> I'm trying to make adjustments. I try to find the, the right balance because what I started to notice at that point when I changed the anatomy is that um, I, I was struggling between my 3D setup and my 2D setup. And because of the focal lens of the camera, uh, I had hard time to find the right balance between the, the lens of the of the different uh, part of the body so I, I, I was I was testing testing things out okay so now I started to come closer but there was still very very odd things very big leg and uh, an odd odd arm arm, arm looks, looks too short legs looks very too big and uh, the, the um, the belly is kind of kind of funny. Okay, and now I made those few adjustments. She's she's almost there now. It's getting closer to what I wanted. Okay, now I, I just uh, make her lose a few pounds, <laughs> trying to get rid of that a bit um, to. I don't know too sensual, excessively sensual pose with too much of a curve in her back, and I and, and I wanted her to be just laid out against the the bed and not uh, not really being here waiting for for something to happen. I just want to be to have her here just, just in the room.
So I wanted to get rid of that of that curve in her back. Okay, and now now I'm getting I'm getting closer to what I wanted. And I think uh, I didn't make that much adjustment after that. Okay, so you can see here I change the focal length again because I thought that this focal length against this one um, it was it was too there was too much distortion still too much distortion I, I really wanted to to go against my usual habitude my my um, sorry that's not the correct word uh, my uh, I have a tendency to always use the wider lens I can and uh, to have a lot of purpose perspective and I just wanted to, to try the opposite you know to just go against the, the habits and the, the comfort zone so continuing to add some details in the background so at that point this armor here wasn't uh, really a part of the composition but I knew I wanted to have something here and also what I I thought is by having something on the left here I could I could have a shape with a direction that would balance her her body trying out different lighting and material setups and at that at that point I was I was uh, I was kind of okay with the anatomy and thanks to a friend later um, and I, I have to to give at that point a special thanks to many friends of mine that helped me because uh, uh, I knew that without without feedback of, uh, of uh, other people uh, I tend to I tend to not see all of my mistakes so usually when I when I'm doing professional work most of the time I have a, an art director and uh, on Titan's Wave, where I, I am art director, I, I have I have the producer with we who give me a feedback, and uh, the problem is that with personal at work, it's it's kind of difficult to to see your mistake because you you don't have an art director behind your back. So having good friends you trust for their honesty and their their um, their eye to give you advice is uh, invaluable. So at that point, I, I have to thank my, my friend uh, Hugh Pinjoski and uh, and uh, Maria Panfilova, which is also uh, a great artist, and uh, Xavier uh, Ribeiro, which is also known by the nickname uh, Lozano. And um, those are the, 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 the three friends. And, uh, and also, uh, I, I, I forget, uh, uh, Aurore Folny and uh, Rafael Villegas. Those are the five friends that I uh, ask uh, feedback to and uh, thanks guys for for uh, helping me out to to notice uh, some uh, of the mistakes uh, I did. So here, more detailing, adding the, adding the leg plates. And now that um, helmet. And honestly, that helmet in that place, I really loved it. And you know what? I loved it so much that I decided to, to put it in another place because what I noticed that this um, helmet in that position with that strong, that strong of a silhouette uh, in this very area, in fact, it was completely stealing the show to, to the main figure. And uh, so I decided to, to put it elsewhere. I decided to put it there because I wanted to be a side of her and not not just stealing all, all, all the attention. But it was cool here. But it ends up finishing here. It, and it was kind of difficult to put it in here because I still wanted to match as close as possible my initial uh, value sketch. And uh, here I created um, a few tangents with with uh, with those parts. So this is something I, I had to take care of later. And uh, I think I still have a bit of that problem right now in the in this image. And uh, maybe later on I, I'll uh, I'll try with you guys to to uh, to do something about it. So here I added also the glaive and the shield and the, the columns. And what you see just here, it's meant to be um, a curtain. 
but at the moment uh, it's just a straight uh, plane. Okay, now I've added the curtain. Um, and what you see also here, and I'll cover that later, is that uh, all of a sudden the, the fabric became really, really more defined. And uh, this is not because I am a super awesome uh, fabric uh, sculptor. Uh, this is because I used the software, I used the Marvelous Designer, which is um, a fabric simulation software. And uh, here I, I solved my problem by, by using a, an external tool. Okay, so this is a kind of uh, of notes that I'm I'm taking all the time, uh, either by myself when I come back uh, after a night and watching at the image, or uh, when I ask a few friends about what uh, they think of the image and, and they give me feedback. So I usually do notes like that and I try to address them because if I don't, I tend to forget. Uh, Sometimes I just notice something and I, I forgot about it. So I miss that point. Is that point? So I, I um, imported the the curtains from a, from a marvelous designer simulation, and I, I tried to get rid of that uh, tangent problem right in here by uh, reworking on the shape of the of the uh, cushion in the back and moving the the helmet a bit away. So here we are. So now I addressed, as you can see, a few of those knots, two of them only. Um, I tried to figure when I addressed this. Maybe I did something in here around her, her arm. Also, I added the, the hand, as you can see. From this step to this step, I sculpted the hand that I had in behind. Um, I think at this point, this is pretty much the final uh, sculpt that I used. I may have retweaked uh, her anatomy thanks to my friend um, Xavier Ribeiro. He pointed me that uh, uh, I misinterpreted some of my references and uh, what I thought to be the rib cage on my reference couldn't be the rib cage. He pointed me that. Uh, I should uh, see a female rib cage as a V in the in the uh, other way around, as a as a V look, looking downward. And uh, I think I addressed that later on. But uh, because I put a toga on her later, I decided to put a toga. Uh, we don't see it anyway. So that, that's kind of these uh, choices I could have made before, the side of the toga before, and I would have, uh, I would, uh, it would have saved me quite, a, quite a lot of time. And uh, this uh, funny render is just about uh, testing the UV on the fabrics, and uh, I usually don't, don't UV um, any of my, uh, of my geometry, expect, uh, accepted for, for fabrics which. Uh, because of all the folds, uh, it's it's kind of very long. It's not difficult, but it's mostly long because you have to to do all the guesswork of uh, where uh, the folds are going. So here I, I just uh, unfolded the the um, the fabric piece and uh, just tweaked the UVs a bit, and uh, it allowed me later on to to design uh, textures that would specifically match the, the flow of the of the fabric. And this is my ID pass. So I'll show you later on and you'll see that in the full process. The ID pass uh, at this point is just such a time saver. It's it's really really a super super useful tool. But to use an ID pass you have to make absolutely sure that your composition is okay and that you won't have to, to change it. Or sometime, if I have to change it, I'll wait until the very last moment where I'm pretty much um, in, a, in, a, in a flat layer working. 
because I, I know I can flat everything. I don't need the underlying layer. And at that moment, I can get rid of some uh, some annoying things. I'm thinking maybe in here, it's obvious that I have uh, a tangent that is not super uh, desirable. Um, but it's very minor. At, at that point, I can't really see uh, important things to, to tweak. I, I, I really thought of my composition before uh, and for sure maybe you see something that would be needed to tweak, but uh, I can't see it at that moment. So I consider it to be almost my final pass. And uh, this ID pass, what it allows me to do is to select, very quickly select with my um, with my uh, magic wand uh, the areas I want to uh, I want to paint on, and it's a very very cool uh, tool. So here I've started to to do some renders to uh, assign uh, materials and uh, tweak the materials and and uh, see with uh, with the global lighting what it would uh, look like. Just to have an idea with the real materials, all, all things will uh, interact, and uh, oh, I could m have them to work uh, with my my initial uh, value composition. Working on the transparency, trying to to see if I can come with um, a correct or more natural uh, material for for her skin. And then, uh, this is the point where I, I decided to to put her toga. I, I, I thought, okay, at that point, having her completely nude doesn't doesn't make really any any better the image. And uh, I also try to be to be you know also a bit pragmatic. And I knew that uh, having a artwork that would be a nude would probably be a, a problem for 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 uh, just showing the image on various places, and uh, you know there is a lot of uh, of place where if you would just have uh, a nude figure, it's it's a problem just to to show the image. So I wanted to put her toga, and I thought that first it would it would be kind of cool, in fact, to have a, a semi-transparent uh, piece of. Uh, of uh, fabric on her on her body, on her um, on her breast and uh, and uh, and belly and torso. And um, second, I thought it would be also kind of the opportunity to show you how to to make a, a more advanced um, piece of work in a, in marvelous designer. Uh, which I'm not super accustomed to, but I just managed to get the basic uh, skills for, for my own needs. Uh, so this kind of funny render is because I decided to go for a 2.2 gamma. If, if you're accustomed to what we call a linear workflow, I just noticed that uh, by default, um, Keyshot 6 had a, a point... Uh, um, Point one, gamma, which uh, is fine for working in the linear workflow. If you want to open uh, your 30 bit uh, render in a, in a compositing software softwares, but in order to for me to to edit properly the image in uh, Photoshop, I wanted to have it in a 2.2 um, gamma, uh, which means I had to uh, to rethink my lighting because it was way too strong for a 2.2 gamma. So here I think I came back to my 2.2 gamma with a, a more adapted um, uh, lighting. Here I was I was making a few tries with Keyshock 6 and uh, testing uh, uh, transparency on materials. Uh, I had uh, quite of a hard time to find the, the, the white materials, the right materials for, for her, because I, I still wanted to add a, a lot of transparency, but uh, I also wanted to have a, a nice materials. Okay, and uh, this is what I used as my base underpaint.
Hmm. Maybe not. Let me see if I did something else later. I think this is my base, my base render. And maybe you see it has some some funny colors. And I'll show you that. This is a very cool thing you can do from a, a 32 bit render uh, is to uh, flatten it to have uh, a one layer tiff and uh, open it in camera row. Camera row. And uh, camera row is an awesome little module of uh, Photoshop that is used mainly for editing a raw photo, raw photography. But uh, raw photography are 32 bit images, I think. and uh, and TIFF, uh, 32 to bit TIFF uh, can be edited in Camera Row, and you can use the full power of uh, Camera Row to color correct your, your best render. Okay, so this is this is the final underpaint layer. This one, this one. And what you see here uh, is an, addition, an additional. Um, what I usually do is it's, it's what I did here when I can, uh, and I have a, a full composition set up like that, and I'm sure I'm not going to change anything. I am um, I'm putting all together my materials for a base render pass in Gishot, and after that I'm doing a, a few other renders, and maybe I'm going to just show you them like that. It's going to be easier to, to see them all at once. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me put that one here. This is my base underpainting. Or maybe this is this one. Anyway, this is one of those two. And those are complementary renders that I'm doing for for having other materials and other properties. And uh, what I'm mostly interested in when I'm doing those is to have um, diffuse lighting informations, which is the case here. Here it's a diffuse material, which means there is no reflection whatsoever. Uh, I'm interested to have ambient occlusion informations. And since, since uh, Keyshot 6, we at least got uh, a proper ambient occlusion materials that render absolutely super fast. It's just completely unbelievable to have that fast of, a, of an ambient occlusion rendering. Uh, I never see something that fast in anything like Modo or, or Maya. I may be wrong, but I know, I know for Maya, it's just a real pain to, to obtain a, a non-grainy, ambient occlusion in a, in a decent amount of time. Um, these are my diffuse reflection informations. I usually do just one diffuse reflection information and by putting it in black and white and uh, playing with the level, I can decide the, the amount of, uh, of um, of sharpness, of, of blurriness of the reflection. And uh, here, sorry, I opened it by mistake. Here is my uh, reflective pass. So this is just a simple reflection pass. Just to have those informations that I, I, I will use mostly this reflection pass in the in the detailing of the of the fabrics where I had a very I had a golden materials. Mm, this pass um, is just um, a wireframe pass to have a correct reference for my ground. To know how to to put my texture and and be sure I will I will I would. Uh, lay out my ground in the proper focal, the proper focal lens. And uh, this is a quick edge pass that I did, uh, not really to use it as it is, but it, it allowed me later to make a selection of the edges and uh, to apply some, some effects only to the edges, which is very, very helpful uh, to convert a very photorealistic image into something that looks more like a painting. And uh, here's a pass that I didn't use, I think. 
on in the specific um, image but i use it very often and uh, it's um, a fresnel a fresnel pass i call it a fresnel pass you can't really do, do <coughs> a fresnel pass in um in Keyshot, or I don't know how to do it, but the way I do it is by using the velvet material, which is acting pretty much like a, a, Fresnel, a Fresnel pass. And uh, what a Fresnel pass does is that the wider the incidence angle between the camera and the, the surface geometry, um, the brighter it comes. And the velvet material combines combines a bit of a Fresnel effect uh, with an ambient lighting. So you have less of this effect present in the shadow areas. So it was a test render. This one was a test render for, for the Toka texture. I wanted to add this, these patterns on the texture, on the Toga. Uh, this was a render that I did just to have an idea of the proper perspective on the pillars. Uh, at that point, I decided to keep to keep the the, um, the pillars as they were. I, I decided to put just a straight line to uh, to change the um, to mark the, the the painting on the pillars because I, I thought the, the straight line was more appropriate in, uh, in the composition. So. It doesn't properly work in terms of perspective, but uh, I thought it was working better for, for the composition. Um, let me see. I think this is the final Toga material render that I use. Uh, and I'm noticing at that moment that I lost quite a lot of this transparency quality where we really see the underlying anatomy. So I may have to maybe bring back this render to to, to correct that because uh, I really love, especially in this area where we can we can see through. Another one, but I finally decided to go for the for the white whiter one. Just the the, the body anatomy in case I, I wanted to to use that later. So at that point, it's it's a moment where I decided to to address the head because the head was absolutely terrible. So I I, I just incorporated this uh, this uh, he, this Hellenistic head study that I did. I did a few a few rendering passes and I and I used that. And uh, this one is just a map that I did a flat with the flat materials, just to have um, a selection that I could use to bring some of uh, these uh, patterns onto the onto the toga. Get another render, um, some kind of a, of a bikini. Uh, I wanted her to look. Uh, a bit more dressed, not not that uh, not that nude. So I decided, okay, if I'm just putting suggesting a bikini, would it would would just uh, do the trick. So later on, I decided to add uh, an oil lamp, which is something uh, I straightly borrow from uh, Alexandre Cabanel uh, five draw painting. Um, I thought it would it would nicely balance this area which was quite dull to have just just a lamp and a, and a few reflection a few hint of reflections so this is an, another reflective pass to uh, to add those reflection later an ambient occlusion for the head just to define her um, her features a bit more another reflective pass still a uh, Taking care of the of the reflection, and uh, I think in that pass, um, my friend Hugh Pingdurski pointed me out that the materials uh, lack uh, some some reflective uh, quality. So I decided to to change my map 
I use the different map for that and uh, use some things that will create stronger uh, uh, reflective patterns that I could use and uh, a diffuse uh, a diffuse path for that uh, oil lamp light and finally the oil lamp itself that I uh, as I, I added afterward and I think we are almost there this one is you'll see me do that in the full process it, it was just a flat uh, rendering with um, the transparency transparency an ablad in the in the tiff so it allows it allowed me to quickly uh, make a selection of the oil, of the oil lamp instead of uh, making um, a selection by hand and uh, finally i decided to add some some more patterns on the on the leg fabric and uh, here i i was just testing out some uh, some patterns and i finally decided for this uh, uh old um, for this inverted pattern, I do I did two paths, but I ended up using both. And here it is. We've gone through the different steps uh, that led to the um, that cover that covered the the, the rendering part. And uh, in next chapters, I, I will cover more about the um, the compositing and uh, the the more uh, technical aspects of uh, of sculpting um, and um, and rendering and all that. So see you in next chapter.